Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Banya Kauda. That's right, it does translate to hot bath. And really, what's better than a hot bath? Except maybe a hot bath you could eat. You know what, that actually sounded better in my head. But anyway, not only is this northern Italian dip very, very delicious, it's also ridiculously easy to make, and it's absolutely perfect for entertaining large groups. And as usual with things like this, there are thousands of ways you can do it. And this just happens to be mine. So let's go ahead and get started and last things first. And what I mean by that is you're going to need something like this. This is a fairly inexpensive candle-powered butter warmer, which of course is how we're going to keep our dip hot during the party. So I'll be using this, but you could use anything similar. Any kind of fondue set or small chafing dish will totally work for this. And then besides something to keep our dip hot in, we're also going to need some kind of platter on which to arrange whatever we're going to dip into this. And traditionally, this is some sort of array of cooked and or raw vegetables. I went with some blanched asparagus, some raw red peppers, some roasted carrots, some Belgian endive, and I also roasted some fingerling potatoes. So that's what I'm going to go with, but of course that's totally up to you. You are the Mad Hatter of your Banya Kauda platter. The good news is this dip is fantastic with everything, so there's really no wrong answers here. And once that stuff's ready to go, we can move on to the actual dip itself. So we're going to start this by crushing some garlic in a mortar, along with a pinch of salt to help the grinding process. And good news, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can just finely chop this with a knife, no problem. But I really do prefer this method. I think you extract a little more and a little different flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and crush that for a minute until it looks something like that. At which point we're going to add the second major ingredient, the anchovies. And by the way, you can't make this without anchovies. Do not ask me for a substitute. Do not ask me if it's okay to leave them out. It's not. If you don't like anchovies, do not attempt this recipe. Okay? So we'll add some anchovies. We'll smash that together. And after another minute or two of crushing, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so kind of a coarse paste. That's all we're looking for. And at this point, we can head over to the stove for this ridiculously simple procedure. So we're going to place a small potter pan over medium heat, to which we're going to add some olive oil. I guess use something from northern Italy, if you want to be geographically correct. But any good extra virgin olive oil is going to work. And then to that, we're going to add two or three tablespoons of cold, unsalted butter. And you might be thinking, why unsalted? Because that's the only butter I buy or use. All right, so quick tip with no explanation, don't buy salted butter, buy unsalted butter. And all we're gonna do is leave that on medium heat until the butter melts and we get that little bit of foam on the top and it should look something similar to this. And once that happens, we're gonna turn our heat down to medium low and add our garlic and anchovy mixture and we'll stir that in. And then we're gonna let it cook for a little bit. And how long you should let this cook depends on who you talk to. Some people don't cook it at all. They simply stir in the garlic and anchovy and their dip's done. And then there's other recipes that'll have you cook this on low for like 15 minutes. But for me, I like to let this cook for about five minutes. I'll adjust my heat somewhere between medium low and low, and that just gets me the flavor profile I prefer. So again, you're gonna have to decide, but I'm recommending five minutes, at which point we're gonna turn off the heat and add the last two ingredients. I'm gonna give mine a pinch of hot pepper flakes. I'm actually using Aleppo pepper because it doesn't have any seeds, but any kind of hot chili is gonna work here. And then last but not least, a little tiny splash of red wine vinegar, just a spoon. I'm gonna stir that in, and believe it or not, that dip is done. So let's go ahead and spoon that into our dish. We will place that above our candle. We will spark it up. Oh yeah. That's gonna keep our delicious anchovy and garlic dip perfectly hot throughout the entire evening. It's also visually a very cool thing to have on your table. And speaking of visual, I decided I needed to fill it up a little more. You know the Italians, abundanza and all that. So I added some more. I tried to garnish the top with a few more Aleppo chili flakes, which just sunk down in and you couldn't see them. But you know what, you gotta try. But anyway, that's it. Banya Kauda. So simple, so rustic, and unbelievably delicious. So let's make this official and go in for a few dips. So I'm going to start with some Belgian endive, which may not seem like the most enticing thing to you, but it is so good in this. I mean, obviously this thing's going to have a very pronounced garlic anchovy flavor, which is really perfect on that crunchy, slightly bitter spear. And then, of course, there's the things that are obviously going to be delicious in this, like roasted fingerling potatoes. And of course, with any kind of vegetable dip, your asparagus spear is a classic. And by the way, the shot reminds me. You can actually make a scaled down version of this and serve it as a very sexy first course for a Valentine's dinner. What's that? You don't want your date eating garlic? Okay, fine. Use melted chocolate and strawberries instead. Problem solved. But anyway, my only regret here is I didn't have any bread to dip in. You really do need some crusty bread along with this. I was trying to be good, but now I completely regret my decision. And to protest, I'm going to double dip this potato. All right, I feel better now. But anyway, I really do hope you give this super easy, super delicious, and very beautiful vegetable dip a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.